Hello everyone, I've just finished reading this book, it's called The New Confessions of an Economic Hitman, this is by John Perkins, okay? This book was first published in 2004, but then it got a second edition in 2016, which is what I have here, and apparently there's a third edition that also came out only this year in 2023, but sadly I didn't even know this book existed <laughs> until I bought the second edition, so maybe the third edition I'll buy a couple of months from now, a year from now, or something like that. But I've only read the second edition because I didn't know that this book existed. One time I was in a bookstore in Dubai and then I saw this book and I quite literally just judged it by its cover. And I didn't really read the pages in or anything. And I thought to myself, oh, this is history. This is kind of like uh, an interesting topic. This, this should seem cool. I'm going to buy it. And then I certainly didn't regret my purchase because this book is really, really, really good. Now, basically, this book is made by a guy called John Perkins. Okay. John Perkins was an economic hitman for the United States in the 1970s, okay? Now, I never knew of the phrase economic hitman before reading this book, okay? Now, what he used to do, if you may ask, was he used to bribe developing countries such as Indonesia and Saudi Arabia as well into accepting huge loans from the United States. And obviously, these loans would be interest-based. Now, these loans were to essentially modernize the country. So they would accept US engineers and corporations such as Bechtel and others into building infrastructure, electric grids and transportation, more advanced technology, etc. And what would happen afterwards is that since these countries were accepting way larger loans than they were actually supposed to be, because people like John Perkins himself would falsify charts and make up fake statistics just to convince and bribe them, okay, into accepting these huge loans, right? They didn't even need to be uh, worth, let's say, billions of dollars, right? Now, what would happen is that these countries that couldn't pay off these debts, which was happened basically all the time, now what would happen is the middle class and the poor class of these countries would get even poorer and only a select few wealthy elite and, of course, the U.S. engineers and corporations themselves would make lots of money. Okay, now this book had lots of information I was not expecting and I was totally surprised by whether it was from the CIA style assassination of Jamie Roldos or Amr Torrijos or the affair with Sally. That was probably one of the most insane parts of this book to do with, um, uh, uh, to, to do with what John had to do as an economic hitman. That Sally affair, man, I can't get that out of my head to be honest. There was also a lot of uh, info to do with certain statistics and certain things were reported like how the 67 richest people in the world that can fit on one bus in London have more assets and have more wealth than the poorest 3.5 billion people. It just makes you think of how our economy, just in general, in the entire world is so corrupt, honestly. And this book was very eye-opening. If I had to describe it in one word or technically two, it would be eye-opening because this book really filled me in on a lot of info that I did not know about before. And another thing that I really like about this book, other than the brutal honesty, was the fact that John Perkins didn't make himself out to be a sort of like messiah figure that redeemed himself. Now, I'll explain what I mean. Because in 1980, he, he as he writes in the book, even in just the second edition, even though the third one has more updates and more chapters from between 2016 and 2023. Like I said, this second edition was in 2016. So after John Perkins left his job in 1980, he, and he tried to do more work for uh, nature and for the forests and so on, because of course, these one of the biggest concerns that John Perkins had with this corporatocracy or death economy, as he calls it, is that it's totally draining the resources of the earth. And we know this, like, like the seas are rising, the ice glaciers are basically just melting away really, really quickly now. So what he decided to do like, as the years went on, you know, from 1988 until now, is he wanted to, to, he still wants to try to preserve the nature and the rainforest and so on. So he made the Pachamama Alliance, for example, Dream Change, like some organizations that he's either made himself entirely or co-founded with with others. And the thing is, what I really like about this book is that he doesn't paint himself to be some sort of amazing figure that 
totally redeemed himself. He doesn't really write about himself in an overly optimistic way. If anything, you can kind of tell the way he writes about himself and his thought processes and how he felt in very specific days or times right after, for example, he did this, uh, let's just say favor, even though it kind of wasn't, but <laughs> how he felt after this thing or before this incident. It really makes you connect with him more. And it also makes you rationalize with him more in the sense that you know that this guy wasn't perfect because of what he was doing to these other countries. Especially that Saudi affair, man. I can't get that out of my head. But it really makes you uh, makes you uh, reflect more on how he was just this the economic hitman, this senseless sort of uh, man that literally like ruined economies or was at least partially in charge of it. And then he redeems himself into this uh, into this amazing guy that's doing a lot of work, that's reporting on literally what he did, which is obviously how this book exists. Because even after uh, bribes and threats to his family and uh, uh, almost like what seemed to be a failed assassination, as as, as he writes in this book, uh, on him, after all these incidents, and he still uh, got to publish this book. So even though he had these incidents, he still reformed himself, and he still. He's doing a lot of work for nature. He's, he has like different conferences and everything that he's done. So it's really interesting that he's done all these changes, but he still doesn't present himself to be some sort of amazing person for the world. And you know, it it can't just be without me. You know what I mean? So that was what I really liked about this book. It kind of allows you to have your own perspective on the guy himself. And another thing I really liked was that the vocab and the, the words, you know, were obviously, you know, good. I didn't find myself searching up every single word, you know, it wasn't like Shakespeare or something, you know, it's, it's easy to understand too, uh, grammar wise and everything. So yeah, that's my book. That's, uh, that's my thoughts on this book. It's very much a, a must read in my opinion. And I really also like that he actually brought solutions on how to fix this death economy that <laughs> him and others have created. I would say really get this book, but not the second edition, not this one that I have. Sadly, uh, I don't know what the other 12 chapters really talks about, but I really like what I have here, even though it's a bit less, and even though it's definitely cheaper and a bit older and more out of date, it still is really much a must read, honestly. I really like this book, and I would highly recommend that everybody else watches this too, uh, reads this too.